Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. But the cause goes marching on. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our Women's Rights Rally. Yay! Yes. Yay. Well, the year is 1920, as you know, but women still do not have the right to vote. No. So this is why we need your help. We need suffrage or the right to vote. And now that you are going to be part of our rally, you need to know our song. So we'll teach it to you. So I will say the words and you will respond. Rise up women. Rise up women. For the fight is hard and long. For the fight is hard and long. Rise up women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up women, for the fight is hard and long. We sing that three times and then we uh, then we cheer and you will be members. Are you ready? Rise up women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. The cause goes marching on. Again. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up. Women for the fight is hard and long, but the cause goes marching on. Thank you! Yay! And you are all now members of our movement. Thank you so much! Yes. We need you! Yes. My name is Nanny Matson Yeager. I have spent most of my adult life fighting for the rights of women to vote. I have come with good news for you. They tell us that Congress has finally decided to change the Constitution to allow women to vote. Hear me, hear me. This will be called the 19th Amendment. Well, this is how it works. It's not over yet. Now it has to go all around the country, as you likely know, and each legislature must vote yay or nay, and we need two-thirds of them, 36, to say yay, they support this. Yes. Well, yes. the good news is we have 35. Well, yes. yes! Yes! And that includes Minnesota. Yes. Yay! Minnesota! <laughs> the bad news is we need one more. Mm. And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and it hasn't happened yet. As a matter of fact, we have been waiting for 72 years. We have been organizing that long. As a matter of fact, it went on even before the Women's Rights Convention in 1848. Even 20 years before that. This has almost gone on 100 years, and it is time for us to bring it to completion. It is time. We have worked for this. We have struggled, we have sweated, we have ached for this. This is our dream. It's within grasp now. It is nearly here. Do you know in Minnesota, we have been working on this since 1867 with one single woman by the name of Sarah Stearns who lived in Rochester. She began the first suffrage club to try to impress upon the legislature of Minnesota, when we were barely a state, to add this to our Constitution. She got close, but it didn't happen, and we have been fighting ever since. She would be amazed that we have thousands of women <clears throat> across Minnesota now in 1920 that are working to make this happen. 
As a matter of fact, Clara Euland organized a rally march that went down Hennepin Avenue in Minneapolis. And 2,000 women came and marched. Yay! Yay! Hear me, hear me! Can you imagine? That was a sight for sore eyes. I will never forget it. So I am proud today to introduce Clara Eulen herself, who is here. She is the Moses of the Minnesota Movement for Women's Rights. Yes, 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 yes. Gentlemen and ladies of Winona, this is a most important time in our state and our country. Our great-granddaughters will remember and cherish this time. We are so close to winning the right to vote. Yes, 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 yes. yes. We must not let this time slip away. I am Clara Euland. I've been president of the Minnesota Women's Suffrage Association since 1914. I came to Minnesota as a poor child of a widowed mother. Education has been my guiding light. Yes, yes. Here, here. My husband, Andreas, came alone and poor from Norway, and he settled in southeast Minnesota. Andreas has become a lawyer and he has often defended women who were on trial. After Andreas and I raised our children, I finally ventured outside the home to literary societies, where I learned about more equal ways for a society to exist. My first goal was to bring kindergartens to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and we succeeded. Bravo. Yay! Bravo. Yay! Bravo! Next, I founded the Women's Club so that women would have a safe place to meet in public. Yes. yes. Excellent. Not long after that, my commitment to women's suffrage began. Mm -hmm. when, when I learned that Norway had passed full voting rights for women in 1913, I knew that my I would fight for full suffrage for women in Minnesota for as long as it took. Here, yes. here. Yes. You likely know that we have been fighting for the right to vote as full citizens mm -hmm. in this country for nearly 100 years. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. We have encountered one obstacle after mm -hmm. another, but we still persist. Yes, yes. we persist. I wish I had a penny for every suffrage bill that we've introduced in St. Paul that has been defeated. Oh, mm. no. Now, I think the tide is finally turning for our ship of equal rights, but we have not yet arrived at port. We live in uncertain times. War, influenza, social unrest, our country continues to need our help. However, when we act as concerned citizens, we need to be treated as full citizens. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. yes. Here, here. And that means we absolutely must have the right to vote. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Do you really think men are more intelligent than no. we are? No. Please join me in chanting, Votes for Women! 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 Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce to you someone you may not have read about in the newspapers, Mrs. Nellie Griswold Francis. She has done powerful work in the black community of Rondo in St. Paul. Nellie Francis is a star in the suffrage movement, a flame burning with passion for equal rights for her sex as well as her race. Her guiding motive is to help her race, and it is so needed. 
Please welcome Nellie Griswold Francis. Yes, Nellie, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Eulen. I am Mrs. Nellie Griswold Francis. And yes, I started the Every Woman Suffrage Club of St. Paul. It is the only suffrage club for colored women in the state of Minnesota. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, all women have an important work to do. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The suffrage club has employed the arts as a means to reaching people, every people, with its message of equal rights for women and social justice for the entire the entire black race. Yes. I started the folk song coterie, coterie, and it has allowed our community to grow. I recommend employing the arts as part of our movement. Yes. yes. The civil rights has always been important to the black community. Why we all know the great work that Frederick Douglass has done for black suffrage and for women's suffrage. Yes, yes. My yes. husband, Billy, you know him as William, and I formed the St. Paul branch of the NAACP. Right. Yes. right. Next, I will speak with the Minnesota uh, law about lynching in Minnesota. Uh -oh. I'm sure you're aware of the horrific lynching of the black men in Duluth, Minnesota. No. This cannot happen again. No. 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 I'm grateful to Mrs. Eulen for supporting our cause. Yes. The National Suffrage Women's Club wanted to cut out the colored woman's membership. Oh, Ms. No. Eulen flatly opposed. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Eulen. Yes. Thank you, Minnesota Association. Soon, I will go to my hometown, uh, my hometown of Tennessee, where I will encourage the legislature to ratify the 19th Amendment. Yes. 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 It looks promising. Okay. Yay. We must all be in this struggle together. Yeah. Here, here. Rich. White, poor, black, we are stronger together. Yes, we are. yes. I want to welcome Nanny Yeager. Thank you so much, Nellie. Your story is just a great inspiration for all of us. I have a tale about another ethnic group. Um, I was raised in a, born to a Swedish family in Red Wing. Um, as I got older, they sent me back to Sweden to study for five years. And when I returned, I was the first Scandinavian student to enter the University of Minnesota. Nice. Now, for the last five years, I have been the president of the Minnesota Scandinavian Suffrage Association. Before me, there was a Norwegian president by the name of Yenova Martin. But I want to tell you the story of how this interesting group started. Uh, Dr. Ethel Hurd looked around Minnesota and said, we are not getting enough members, and we are not getting enough of ethnic members from the new immigrants in our country. How do we do this? She looked at the German population, and they just were not interested. And she finally realized it was our partnership with the Minnesota or with the uh, National Women's Temperance Union, which wanted to prohibit alcohol. That that was what the German uh, community just could not agree with. Um, they are too associated with the beer gardens in their culture. So Dr. Hurd said to herself, what group would be willing to sub support the prohibition of alcohol as well as fight for women's voting rights? And she thought, 
Aha, it's the Scandinavians, the Norwegians, the Swedes, the Danes. As a matter of fact, their countries have already passed women's suffrage. And so she began to organize. And she, the second thing she said that was very astute is she, this organization will be for immigrant women, women whose family are only first or second generation here in our state. They could be right off the boat and they were fine, they were qualified. The third thing that she planned was there would be no membership fee. That was a big change. All of our other organization required somewhat large membership fees. There would be none. They would earn, our, our money is earned in other ways with cultural events where we charge admission. This worked beautifully. We have Scandinavian women join, have been joining from all over our state of Minnesota. They could be servants, they could be hard scrabble farmers, they could be young uh, governesses, and they were joining and they have continued joining. So now that we have not only tens but hundreds and thousands of Scandinavian women in our organization and this has made all the difference Wonderful. in yes. our, our yes. struggle in Minnesota. Yes, this has just changed everything. And now we have six different organizations from various communities that are part of our movement and we have 30,000 members across our state. Here, here, from here, here, here. Just an amazing result and it has finally convinced our legislature to approve of the 19th Amendment. It has all paid off. We are so, what can we say? We are stronger together. As Nellie said, we are stronger together. I have a very good friend I'd like to introduce now. Uh, she is fierce and fearless in her support uh, for women's full citizenship. Uh, her name is Mrs. Emily Bright, and she has a new project that she's going to tell you about as well. Please welcome Emily Bright. Thank you, Mrs. Yeager. And it is true, we are stronger together. Every one of us makes a difference. I am Emily Bright. As a child in Illinois, I was so fortunate to hear the remarkable late Susan B. Anthony speak. Yes. Oh. Her powerful message of hope for women inspires me still. Yes. How I wish you all could have heard her. Oh, yes. It, yes. Was, yes. it was wonderful. During the recent Great War in France, President Wilson put our entire women's suffrage movement on hold across mm. the nation. He claimed it was unpatriotic. Oh, boo! Oh. We had marched for peace and avoidance of war. We formed Mother's Day for peace. Mm. This certainly was not fair. When President Wilson declared war, he started arresting our peacemakers. Oh! This was not acceptable, and no, some of no. our brave young members began to protest in front of the White House. Yes. We had women during the Great War who worked on the front lines in France as nurses, ambulance drivers, wireless radio operators. Yes. We fought for democracy in the Great World War only to come home to our country where only half of our citizens have those democratic rights? Mm. The male half? No. no! No, we have to work harder. We have some of our young members working with a woman named Alice Paul in Washington, D.C. They are building a more powerful women's association, the yes, National yes. Woman's Party. Yes. We yes. must push forward in our nation's yes. capital now. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The National Woman's Party. 
I have a letter from Bertha Moeller, who is a Minnesota Swedish woman. She's working with Alice, working in this um, push for more power. She sends a letter of the movement and what is happening in the nation's capital. And I would like to read that to you now. Dear sisters in the movement, yes. I am working with Alice Paul, who is president of our new, more forceful party, the National Woman's Party in Washington, D.C. As you know, we have taken to the streets to protest. 168 of us were arrested for picketing. We were jailed for exercising our right of public assembly, which is our right in the Constitution. Oh, for shame. Perhaps you read in the paper that I was arrested 11 times in front of the White House. I was jailed twice. On one of those jail terms, I began a hunger strike, mm -hmm. like the brave women in London have been doing. Alice has been in many of those hunger strikes. We would rather die than be gagged and speechless. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The hunger strike finally brought attention to our cause in the newspapers. They couldn't let us die, so they began to force feed us. Mm -hmm. Oh, you my can't, my. You can't my imagine my. how terribly mm. painful that is. But worse, how humiliating mm. to be treated like farm animals. Mm. Finally, the big city newspapers have brought attention to our demands, and that has brought a giant step forward. Yes. Our pain has brought rewards. Congress has finally passed our constitutional amendment for suffrage. Yes. yes. 35 states have ratified or signed yes. this precious document, including Minnesota. Yes. Bravo. Bravo. That's worth applause. Yes. yes. But we are not finished yet. We still need one more state. Please help us. Sincerely, Bertha Moeller. And our thanks go to Bertha Muller for all of her sacrifices and yours as well, Mrs. Bright. So, one more state. Which one will it be? Will it be Tennessee? Will it be Connecticut? So, the way you can help us is, do you know anybody who lives in either Tennessee mm. or Connecticut? Mm. If you do, would you please write to them? Please. Ask them to pressure their legislatures mm. to approve the 19th hear Amendment. Ye, hear ye. Or go visit them, even better, and work mm. with the suffrage organizations in the towns of Tennessee. We have addresses for them. Just ask us. We can help you to find these places. <sighs> Let's take our struggle beyond the borders of Minnesota. It is time, yes, and we can do yes, this. Yes, here it is, here it is. And let's sing one last time together. Mm -hmm. Rise, Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. But the cause goes marching on. One more time. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. Rise up, women, for the fight is hard and long. But the cause goes marching. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming today and watching uh, Votes for Women Rally 1920. Uh, I'm joined here by Jane Peck, which will come on the screen here in just a second. Um, oh, there we go. Hello, yeah. Jane. Hi. <clears throat> to do a little <laughs> costuming, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got like we said, you got to celebrate, right? So. Right. Um, you got to celebrate International Women's Day. Right. Happy Today. International Women's Day. Day. Yes. Well, um, 
We have quite a few people here joining us this evening, but first I just wanted to kind of introduce myself and then I'll introduce Jane and take it away. Um, my name is Max Stevenson. I'm the director of exhibitions and programs here at Norway House. I wish it was a sunny outside and bright, but you know what? We're, we're getting there with the warm temperatures. So, um, And I'm joined here by uh, Jane Peck, who is the uh, writer, director, and one of the actors in the performance that you just saw. Um, and I, th I think there's a few other actors here tonight with us as well. So, But before we get started, what I wanted to just say to everyone is, um, if you have any questions about the performance that you saw tonight, question for Jane, um, please feel free to write it in the chat box. Uh, how you can access this chat box is just by hovering over the bottom of your screen. You should see a little bar that pops up. There'll be a little chat icon. You can click that. And you can type a question in there. Um, otherwise, if you would like to ask live, uh, we wanted to make this a little bit more intimate, you know, if you would like as well. So I would be happy to turn on your video and your mic. Um, if you'd like me to do that, you can just write your name in the chat box. Or if you go to that same bar where the chat box is, there's a little smiley face with a plus sign in the corner that says reactions. Once you click on that, there's a button that says raise hand with a little hand, uh, you know, up in the air like that. So just click that and that'll let me know that you would like to ask a question live. Um, but before we take questions, um, Jane, I mean, there's so much content that you covered here. Just little snippets, I mean, of different, you know, racial uh, backgrounds and different, you know, um, minorities and, you know, women from, you know, around the nation. And, you know, we talked about Scandinavia even here too. Um, I, I've got to look in, research a lot, many more of these women here. I mean, there's so many different stories I feel like I can kind of explore and learn from, not to mention the fact that there was social unrest, war and influenza happening at the same time as uh, the civil rights, you know, right movement. And so yes. what a, I mean, hard, it fascinating could. time for this to happen. So I'll kind of let you kind of talk about what inspired you um, and maybe a little bit more about it. And then we'll take some questions. Great. Well, you know, they were going through an epidemic, the not, not 1918, 1919, and uh, there's a little bit left in uh, 1920. So there are great similarities to our time. Um, there was a lot of um, racial unrest because of soldiers returning from World War I and uh, feeling that, um, you know, black soldiers returning feeling they should be treated, you know, equally because they fought in the war and they were not treated equally. And um, after the war, people were poor and therefore, you know, there was unrest for, amongst the labor unions and formation of labor unions. So it was, there were a lot of similarities <laughs> to yeah. our time. Same. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just quickly introduce Roxanne Poindexter. Um, Roxanne, do you want to come on in person? Oh, I'll invite her here. So. Okay. I'm. There she is. <laughs> well, we have a, that's good. That's fine. <laughs> there okay. we are. Hi, Roxanne. Ah, hi. Um, so, well, go ahead, Jane. I, I just wanted to say Roxanne was uh, our actor for uh, Mrs. Nellie Griswold Francis. And Roxanne, um, do you want to, what do you want to say about your character? There's so much more to be said about her. Nellie was, she was quite a woman. She really was. Her and her husband, um, William Francis were uh, in their own rights, uh, were activists. They were the Michelle and Barack Obama at that time. They really were. And the things that she managed to acquire, I mean, the anti-lynching law, um, she, she fought for educational um, growth for, for minorities, for immigrants, um, uh, Aborigines. Um, she, way back in the South, she, she worked endlessly. They, um, they moved to Minnesota when she was very young with her mom and her dad and her sister. And she was a singer. She was, she was so, um, so talented. I mean, um, amongst everything else, she was, she was talented. She was a songstress. She was a dancer. She, um, she performed. Um, she uh, was a poet. She, she, in fact, her poems um, were, um, were awarded. She, she did a poem. She graduated from Central High School in St. Paul. And uh, she met her husband after graduation. Um, a couple of years after graduation, they got married and they continued to work and work. And um, 
he became um, the ambassador to Liberia. But before that, they bought a home in um, um, Groveland, uh, Mac area of St. Paul. And they got, they got pushback from the people in the neighborhood, from the association over there. And they had crosses burned on their lawn. Um, they were threatened uh, by the Ku Klux Klan and they fought, they fought back and they won that fight. And they, they bought that home and they stayed in that home for, I think it was almost four years before they went to Liberia. And then when they went to Liberia, her husband got yellow fever. So he died a couple of years after they were in Liberia. And then um, she decided to come back to Minnesota and she fought that cause for another 40 years. Nellie lived to be in her 90s, like 95. And uh, she continued the fight. She, she started the only black uh, women's suffrage uh, group of, of uh, Minnesota. And they later named it a different name. They called it the um, Every Woman's Progressive Council. Um, she even went and spoke with the, to the uh, president, President Tab. She, she, fought her, she took her cause everywhere. She really did. She was, I am amazed that um, we don't have a school named after she and her husband. It just, the, the history that, the fact that it doesn't show that history here, even in St. Paul, is just really, really sad. She died in her home state of Tennessee, and she was in a nursing home for the last decade of her life, and she became, um, she became blind. She was blind, and she also became deaf before, before she died, and, and, and uh, it wasn't even recognized at her memorial service, all the works that she had done. It just mentioned the fact that she was married to her husband. So uh, the women just were not given the platform. Well, thank you. Wow, thank you, Roxanne. And I should add that um, a year or so before we, we first did this play and uh, then made the video when the pandemic came, about a year before that, Roxanne portrayed um, Nellie Francis in another production, which was about the burning of the crosses on, on the lawn, uh, mm -hmm. the house that they were buying in St. Paul. So um, Roxas, Roxanne has a deep uh, understanding of- Yeah, and that one is on YouTube too. It's called Not In Our Neighborhood. And uh, it's, it's worthy of watching. It's, uh, we had fun. <laughs> we did it at the Landmark Center. Well, you know, she's someone you you know you haven't learned about, you never hear about, you know, and no. you're why. Yeah. And she sounds like a true Renaissance woman and like a superstar. Someone she really you, was. Yeah. And beautiful on top of it. She was really yeah. a very they were a really handsome couple. They really were yeah. of, of that time. They just were dynamic. It, it's amazing that we don't know about them here in St. Paul. I didn't grow up in St. Paul, and so I grew up in Nebraska, but I am just I'm just saddened that they're not known here. So in fact, that's why they, um, the author, the, the writer of the play that we did, that's why he told that story was because it sh it's something that should have been known. So. Well, yeah. thank you for portraying her and helping share and spread her story because that's very important. Yeah. It was an honor. It was an honor. And I, I will just add one more thing is that actually more recently within the past year, there's been some more research done through um, old, old archives of the uh, the Appeal, which is a St. Paul Black newspaper that goes back more than 100 years. Mm. And uh, in the Appeal, they discovered that, um, you know, Nellie, with her group, she had 50 members, uh, Black women from the Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul, mm -hmm. the group. These were all very active women, um, uh, very civic-minded, educated women. And um, through some of this research, we actually know the names of about 25 of them. Mm -hmm. a great progress. So that Nellie is not just one. You know, In fact, uh, across the street from the Capitol, on the grounds there, there are memorial stones of Nellie and some of those women. Yes, yes, the, yeah, that's that's our uh, uh, women's suffrage memorial on the grounds of the state capitol, just sort of slightly southeast of the capitol itself. I urge everybody to go there when the weather is good. You'll mm -hmm. find all of the women in this show on uh, the memorial, with the with one exception, Emily Bright is 
not on there mm. for some reason. But um, uh, everyone else is on there, including Nellie. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful to know. Yeah, I mean, there's all these things, right? That we, we don't know, that we don't care about. We have such, such treasures here. So, oh, did we, did we have a question there maybe? Heard a voice. Maybe it's, oh, looks like we do have a question uh, from Kathy Tumheim. So I will invite her here actually to um, ask her question. Hey, Hi, hey thank you, Max. Um, I would like to thank Jane and Roxanne and Kelly and any any of the other performers. This was really enjoyable and interesting, and I know uh, not enough about this. But I would like to share a quick story. Um, I have been a Gustavus professor at Gustavus Adolphus College, business management professor, and we started a women in leadership club there for our female students. And it grew and grew and now we have like 200 students and 600 alumni and we put on a big conference every year. And um, last year we had a, a we honored uh, women for the 1920 uh, vote. And one of my students brought in an article, I just Googled it, I just found it again. Um, but maybe you knew this, I didn't know this, but in 1920 in South St. Paul, women were, first in the United States to vote under the 19th Amendment. And so I, so, okay, Roxanne's nodding her head. I didn't know that. And it just makes me so proud to be a Minnesotan that there was all this work across the country, but it was in South St. Paul where the first votes were cast by women. So anyway, I just wanted to share that, Max. Well, thank, yeah, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, thanks for joining today. And thanks for sharing that story. So if anyone else has any uh, questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand there um in the chat and um we can have you ask uh, roxanne or jane a question here so there was a question um yeah. somebody asked here. about do we perform in schools and uh, we did perform in at a high school in, in austin uh, in front of 700 high school kids and uh, we involved them in the parade in the song and uh, marching in and um, they cheered and they, you know, booed in the appropriate places. And uh, they really actually got, it, uh, we were told that they'd never seen the uh, Lyceum with as much participation. So we do like schools. Um, and there, it, it is not free. <laughs> there is a fee. <laughs> but you can find us uh, at uh, historyalivelanesboro.org. I put that in the chat. Yeah. Um, if you are looking yeah, for we us. can share this afterwards too. I just um, have to add one thing. I imagine people are wondering what was the 36th, which was the 36th state that approved this 19th Amendment so it became law. And that well, state was Tennessee, mm -hmm. which may, may some of you may have known. And um, we several of these characters in our show, these suffragists, went down to Tennessee to work to uh, try to convince people. Um, Clara Ulan went for a while, Bertha Mueller went for a while, um, and uh, Nellie had contacts in Tennessee where she grew up. Um, everybody tried their hardest to influence people, and I have to tell you this story of what really tipped the balance. It's <laughs> <laughs> one vote. The sun. The whole thing hung on one vote. And that vote, the way this happened, there was um, one young man who uh, was a legislator, legislator in Tennessee. He was going uh, to, to work that day to vote, and his mother uh, had tucked a little note in his briefcase that said, please, please vote for suffrage in the 19th Amendment. And he hadn't been sure what he was going to do. He read the note and he voted for it. He was the one vote that changed the country. So never think that your one vote isn't worth anything. <laughs> right. Wow. Who knew? Who that knew? <laughs> Well, say, yeah. it looks like I have a few other questions here in the chat box, and it looks like I might have a video um, question or comment as well. So I'll start with the video, and then maybe we can get to a couple of the questions in the chat box. Um, and then 
see if we have anything else. But if we run out of time, I would love to share some of these responses or questions um, later and maybe have Jane and Roxanne answer these. And I'd be happy to um, email them to everyone who's attended this evening. So here, I will um, ask this person here to share their question or story. Oh, it looks like we have um, Michelle Rowley with us. She's one of our actresses. Okay. She said somehow she can't get her video to work. Okay. Um, she's under Michelle -er here. And oh, she's yeah. just, just on the phone. So welcome, Michelle. So normally when we perform this, we actually have Michelle portraying Bertha Muller, the fiery young uh, activist who who then initiated the hunger strike in Washington, D.C. Um, and um, Michelle does a wonderful that. Michelle, um, can we get you unmuted? I think yeah. it's under Michelle or, and see if you want to tell us anything about Bertha Muller. Yeah. Well, while I work on that, I see we have someone else here who I think has a question or a comment to share. So um, I, I, I don't know your first name. I'm sorry. C. Um, yes. Yeah, Hello. OK. <laughs> Uh -huh. Your question uh, or story here? Yeah. Oh, oh okay. you are uh, live with us, so I, <laughs> no need to okay. take it. Like, so. I was wondering, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I bet you can. Hang yes. on, I figured out how to do this. Um, <laughs> Excellent. I think, yes, we can hear you just fine. You. So. Yep. While we're waiting, someone mentioned the Iron Jawed Angels, um, which shows the protests and uh, the hunger strikes in Washington. It's an excellent film, uh, Iron Jawed Angels. I recommend it to everybody. Thank you for bringing this this up, um, John. This is yeah. I really okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm ready now. Okay. Um, first of all, um, is there any way uh, we could see this again at our own leisure? Is that that one, um, the link there on YouTube, was that the same thing we just saw? Yes. Yeah, so uh, what you can do is you can, I just put in the chat, if you can find it, the, um, the web address, website address for our um, uh, the, the website for our nonprofit performing group. And we are called History Alive Lanesboro. And so it's under historyalivelanesboro.org. And we have featured there a link right to this video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. When, you, when you get to the site, uh, hopefully you'll see there is actually a second, a part two, which is the aftermath. And it talks each character talks a little bit about what happened next and so that was the link that max put in earlier much, oh. much earlier that's yeah happened. it was very 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 well done it just reminded me of the movie i had once seen called the will of their own i have it on dvd and it started with all this whole thing about women wanting the right to vote. It's it's a very interesting movie. I hope you can try and find a copy of it and, and watch it. It's very, very good. Oh. <laughs> you know, a lot of the things they mentioned in the movie, they mentioned in, in, in this play. And I'm just thinking, yeah, the two kind of go together. So <laughs> that's something I never, ever knew about Nellie Francis. Uh, oh, want to look her up and, you know. So uh, this sort of the recommendation well, seat. Um, yeah. It, so you were somebody, uh, let's see, I think it's John who said, where do you find some of the research? And so if you want to know more, there is like kind of the Bible for uh, about Minnesota, Minnesota suffragists is a book called Organizing for the Vote. It's put out by the Minnesota History Center. Um, the author is uh, B. Stuhler. I'll write it in the chat here. But she goes through um, many, many of these suffragists that uh, many more than we portrayed. And that's kind of, there are many other sources for things, but that's kind of got it all together. Barbara Stuhler has really done a great job. So I recommend that and I'll, I'll put it in the chat here. Well, thanks. It looks like we have Michelle here who's just joined oh, us as well. Hi, how are you all? I just, sorry, I came came a little late and then couldn't get my video stuff to work. So um, yeah, I don't know if I have a little bit of information that um, 
Jane sent me about Bertha Moeller, but um, so if anybody has any questions, she was a feisty, interesting, much needed suffragette for the time. Can you tell us what she did next? Sure. Okay. So after she, uh, I'm gonna look a little bit because I, I, I've been around out and about today, so I didn't get a lot of time to look over this, even though I, it should be in my head still. Um, so she. In um, 1916, she was organized throughout the state. Uh, this is so after um, after she was arrested, she was arrested 11 times and served two jail sentences in Washington, D.C., and one of those starting a hunger strike. But in she she went and pers was persuading both of the Democratic or both of the um, presidential parties to get uh, and persuaded the Democratic Party's presidential nominee in 1920 to help with the ratification drive for the 19th Amendment um, with that last crucial state in Tennessee. And that same year, she led suffragette delegations from every state to also lot, um, lobby William Harding, which was the Republican nominee for his support. And so in 1921, she started law school at the University of Minnesota. And she she was researching and promoted um, women in the ERA for years. I know that um, when she moved to Chicago, she worked a lot for labor rights, for women's labor rights. And she even, um, I don't know if I have it in, it fits in here. So I mean, she did go to um, she went internationally. I can't remember where she went. I have it in my notes somewhere. I should have read it before. But she um, represented um, women in the union somewhere. I can't remember. Germany, perhaps. Germany. Maybe it was Germany. Yeah. It was somewhere. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. OK. It was in Germany. And so she was really, once she became a lawyer, she was really into advocating for labor rights and specifically for women. And so she. Um, she moved and, to, and this and was when she lived in Chicago. And I think for the ERA, right? What didn't she work hard to pass the ERA? She worked hard for the ERA. Yeah. Um, she finished law at Northwestern in 1925, and then she divorced Charles um, Muller and who, and then supported herself. I, I don't believe she had children. I keep forgetting no. that part of it. I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. And. So yeah, m most of her career, she fought for ERA, which never has been passed, um, first in Chicago and then later in Washington, D.C. for the federal government. And in 1930, um, she married Peter Dellen and her name changed from Mueller to Dellen. And since the, and I believe they were ended up in California. You may correct me, yeah. Jane, but um yeah, so there isn't a lot of information about her after that, but she's been fascinating to research. Both Jane and I have been researching her, and hopefully we'll get some information about her in the Minnesotapedia. Is that correct? Yeah, Mino, Minopedia, yeah, which we are hoping to write an article Minopedia, about thank her you. for Minopedia, but uh, with the pandemic, everything stopped for Minopedia, which is our Minnesota Historical Society sort of online encyclopedia. It's excellent, mnopedia.org. Yeah, it's wonderful. Minopedia, we'll have to look that up. Yeah. Well, it sounds like all these women just have had such fascinating lives and stories. You yeah. Know, Renaissance women. And, um, I was gonna say, I actually have one question more here, and I think um, we'll kind of take this as the last question just to kind of respect everyone's time here. Um, but if anyone else has any other questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat or email me at mstevenson at norwayhouse.org. I will put my email address in the chat box here and then I will pass these along to Jane, um, Roxanne, and Michelle. And, I, um, I see John Scanlon has one here about um, what was the public reaction. And, you know, re the reactions are always, we're mixed all over the country. Um, you know, there was, uh, there was less protesting, of course, in the countryside, 
Um, it was a little more of an of a of an urban phenomenon. Not completely, though. I mean that, like we said, there were Scandinavian women who were involved all across the state that really made that difference and talked to their husbands. But you know, I I had noticed something that these, you know, there were a lot of women whose husbands didn't agree with this. Uh, these women. Um, had husbands who were very supportive. And I think that actually says something for, you know, that was actually important for women to be really involved at that time. Because of the way society was set up, if their husband was against it, you know, life would be much more difficult and they would be not as able to contribute, you know, in these ways that they did. Um, so there was there was plenty of negative reaction. There are all kinds of, you know, there are uh, cartoons in the um, Minneapolis Tribune, you know, where they'd make fun of suffragists, um, you know, and how they were abusing their husbands, supposedly. And, you know, there was plenty of anti-suffrage reaction. And it was, you know, you know, Mostly, you know, men who were against it, but there was a group of women who were against the suffrage movement as well. They were smaller, but they were there. Yeah, so, I mean, it wasn't smooth sailing. You know, it it was not not easy. It was, that's why it took so long. It just, I mean, to think about that, now it's 200 years since they started. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, well, thank goodness they fought. They fought I hard. did not get to introduce Kay. Uh, where is Kay? Kay Wold, there she is. Kay, she, her, her video is not on, but Kay Wold uh, portrayed um, our Clara Euland in this show. Um, she did the ex such an excellent job, and Clara Euland was uh so important her um you know she she really she was such a manager that she pulled all these groups together and she managed to you know get this thing over the top she she is the one of two people who have a plaque in our state capital mm. so you can go there and see Clara Ulin's um plaque that she was extremely well respected, even by all the male legislators. They didn't always re agree with her, but they did respect her. She, uh, we couldn't have done it without Clara Euland, but all the others as well, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Kay, for portraying her. Kay's here now on video. Here. We have a, we have her. Uh, yeah. Would you like to say anything real quick before we end the program tonight, Kay? I was really proud to portray Clara Euland. Uh, and, and one of the things that I enjoyed the most was being able to introduce Nellie Griswold Francis, just <laughs> recognizing that Clara felt it was vital to have black women as part of this movement. That really was a thrill for me. Um, and when I um, would speak in front of an audience that had uh, men and had that line about, do you really think men are more intelligent than we are? Um, I wondered how that would be received. I, I know my own mother, I'm not, I'm speaking as myself now. She um, never wanted to uh, diminish my father in any way. And she worked, um, outside of the home um, when most women were not. So, and I, want, I wonder um, with Clara's husband uh, being a lawyer who was also uh, involved in women's lives, defending them, whether that uh, gave her some credibility as, as well as her own leadership skills. But, I thank you for letting me be a part of that. Thank, well, thank you. You. Kay. you were you were a perfect 
Clara Euland is just <laughs> terrific. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to all of our actors. Or, yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you, actors, and everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I see there's still a few questions here, but like I said, um, we'll email those and we'll all send kind of responses from Jane and, and um, Roxanne, Michelle, and Kay, and um, we'll see if we can't get those answered. But um, thank you again so much for joining us this evening. Um, we'll sign off here. And I've actually recorded this whole thing, so I'll be able to uh, post this afterwards in a few days. And um, we'll be able to share it with uh, even more friends and, and family. Oh. Well, and I want to thank uh, Max and Norway House for hosting this event. I really appreciate you doing this and and um, allowing this story of the involvement of Norwegian and all Scandinavian Minnesota women in this movement, which is not a story that is very well known. So, right, and we didn't even touch on that yet tonight. We you didn't know. talk much right. about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know the story in the in the video about the formation of the Scandinavian Suffrage um, Association it, it tells a lot of it, you know, about why it was formed and how many people joined and how that the numbers changed the whole result. You know, the Scandinavian numbers really did change, you know, the the movement here in Minnesota. Sounds like a future program to me. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, thank you, Roxanne and Michelle and, and Kay. Um, good night, everyone. Happy night. International Women's thank Day. You. And yes. uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.